Wilbur mm -hmm. Ross has said that he would like to begin NAFTA negotiations in the latter part of this year. Have you received any specific, you know, specific timing, you know, July, August, September? Well, when will NAFTA talks begin? Well, let me tell you first that Wilbur Ross just last week make, made a different comment. He's not aware that Mexico is going to go through a presidential election in the middle of 2018. So he just made that statement that uh, it will be in the best advantage of the countries involved that we finish this negotiation during the context of this year. So we can have it approved the latest by early 2018 or the, the second quarter of 2018. Why? Because wherever I negotiate, nobody will be able to make sure that we deliver because you don't know the outcome of the election. So the incentives are there for us to really set an objective of negotiation, the latest by the end of 2017. Now, if that is going to be possible, depends if they notify the US Congress sometime because they went into res res recess on the 30th They have April. not triggered their consultation they, they, period. They have not triggered it. And they, they think that they may trigger it by the end of April. If that happens, then we'll be starting negotiations anywhere at the end of July, beginning of August. And, you know, when you met with Secretary Ross, there was a bit of confusion at your meeting in Washington. Uh, he said they, the United States is considering uh, bilateral talks with Canada and Mexico or a trilateral talk. You said we must negotiate all parties at the table. Will all parties be at the table for the NAFTA negotiations? Definitely, because NAFTA is a trilateral agreement. Can you imagine negotiating uh, rules of origin bilaterally? What determines the, the regional content is impossible. We are producing cars together. We are doing planes together. So doesn't make any technical sense. Probably in the overall agenda beyond trade, mm -hmm. you'll do bilateral things, of course, because the immigration issues or the security issues are different. But in trade, the only thing it makes sense is to do a trilateral negotiation. Rules of origin, you mentioned it. Uh, this is, uh, for everyone out there, this is the rule that says a certain percentage of a product needs to be made within North America. In and, order to get the benefit and, uh, of uh, tariff free. Would you, in negotiations, would you allow or tolerate uh, different rules of origin for different countries or do the rules have to be uh, the same across the board? There is no one trade agreement in the world that has country specific content. It does not exist. The content has to be measured regionally. So there is no way you can define in this production process, this percentage has to be made in Mexico or Canada or the US because that, that is equivalent of having some type of a centralized all Russia economy, like a central plant process. Markets react to, to, to incentives. Do you have any more clarity on the US trade policy? Obviously there were threats of tariffs uh, you know, during the campaign and early in President Trump's uh, term. Uh, are, are you preparing for tariffs? I think in the last interview I had with your network, I, I, I made it very clear that uh, this negotiation on NAFTA is about to update NAFTA, modernize the agreement, and definitely strengthen value in the North American region. We cannot go back we cannot introduce tariffs. We cannot do quota management. This is the kind of trade that used to be done in the 70s. We want to look forward and to enrich and, and, and increase the volume of trade we do. Uh, tariffs and quotas are part of the past. If there are any signs of tariffs, you're prepared to uh, counteract? I think that, uh, first of all, we are, we are negotiating. It, until we finish the negotiation, NAFTA will not be replaced. Therefore, that, that is a different item. There are no tariffs in NAFTA today. Now, the negotiation process itself definitely is going to be built in a, in a constructive way. Now, if uh, the talk starts being about introducing tariffs that don't, do not exist, the problem is that we are opening, like I said before, the Pandora box, because I'm going to have Mexican interest groups loving me to introduce in NAFTA tariffs for everybody. So the corn guys are, are going to ask me introduce a 30% tariff on corn in Mexico or the apple guys from Chihuahua. And I'm sure that the apple guys from Washington state or the corn guys from Iowa will not like tariffs on corn or apples coming back into NAFTA. So it's not in the best interest neither of the United States or Mexico to reintroduce tariffs. Did you ever expect yourself to be in these shoes? Uh, you know, have you found yourself, you know, could you imagine yourself defending an agreement that you originally negotiated? Well, sometimes life is full of surprises. Uh, I have never 
not even as of last year I thought that uh, we will be in this situation today but fortunately every challenge has uh, the opportunity to convert it into a, a winning proposition I, I do believe there are very good chances that we can uh, end up with a much better agreement than the one we have Thank you.